from inside software. The topic is UEFI and the SEO security development life cycle. Let's welcome Trevor. So I'm Trevor Western from Inside Software, and I'm here to talk about the Security Development Lifecycle, SDL. So specifically, I'm going to talk about unit testing with SDL, and why should you should do unit testing, and I'll give you a real-world example from a, uh, a code base I won't mention. I'll give you some recommendations and some resources on how to implement unit testing on the SDL. Uh, so SDL has been around for some time, and uh, there are five phases to SDL, shown by those little circles there. And the L in SDL stands for life cycle. And it's promoting the idea that this is a continuous process. You don't do SDL once and then be done with it. You do SDL as an integrated part of your product development. It doesn't go away when you finish. So you can go through this cycle multiple times. And today I'm just going to talk about the unit testing portion of it. But keep in mind, there are other parts to this. And it's important that you also work on the other pieces. And you can start anywhere. It doesn't matter if you start with assessing threats, you can assess changing your development models. I recommend you start with support and training portion of it first. Uh, Microsoft pr produces some uh, free training on SDL, um, and I recommend you start there. But afterwards, you can continue with any other phase of this. So what is a unit test? Um, it's a collection of test cases that verify the functionality and behavior of new code and prevent breaking of previously checked in code. So that's the official definition of what a unit test is. But it's really the smallest piece of testable code that you can write. You're trying to test the smallest portion of it. And the idea is to collect a group of unit tests and uh, actually end up with a library of unit tests that exercise an entire module. Um, it's meant to be run automatically and frequently. And we'll talk about test harnesses in a little bit in a couple of slides. Um, it's important to have a test harness here that does this automatically for you. Don't run these tests manually if you can avoid it. The principle here is that we want to uh, use test-driven development. So this is a strange idea to a lot of people, that you should be writing the unit tests first before you actually write the code. And this is a change in the way you think about doing your development. And I'll give you a couple examples in a few minutes of how this should work. And it should be a very simple process. You want to have the smallest testable piece of code as your first unit test. So a unit test provides you with visible evidence that new code functions and behaves correctly in the form of a simple binary answer, either passed or it failed. That's all you want as a result. It prevents new code from breaking previously checked in code. Um, I'll speak out of turn here. You wouldn't believe the number of times you look in the change logs and it says, <coughs> made this change to correct something we did in the previous change that broke something we didn't plan on changing. So it's a very common thing to under-test the code that's being checked in. And the idea of a unit test is to prevent that from happening. So uh, you have a reproducible and verifiable result for the QA reports. Uh, Remember, this is internal testing. QA is often done with external testing in black box style. So a unit test is intended for internal testing. And of course, it promotes good software development practices. Um, we heard earlier today about the SCTs, which are going into open source. Don't duplicate anything that's already in the SCTs. Um, the Canonical firmware test suite is very good, and we'll hear more about that in tomorrow's session. You're really focusing on the internal UEFI modules that are running pre-OS. Unit tests are very small, and so you can't write unit tests for everything all at once. That's too ambitious. Start with something simple and small. My recommendation is you start with the first bug that comes across 
your desk. Right? You're going to write a unit test to prevent that bug from happening in the future. And also, as you get more experience with this, start writing unit tests for new code. Keep all the unit testing code together in one place. Keep it together like a library. Uh, maintain them together. And use a unit test framework or a test harness to manage these tests. Um, this is impossible for you to do. You'll be writing dozens of these tests. Without a test harness to help get you started, it's very hard to manage unit testing. So a unit test harness provides some of the following capabilities. And at the end of the slide, I'll give you a list of a few uh, test harnesses that are already out there and available for you to use for free. Um, don't invent your own test harness. It's not worth the effort. There's some good ones already out there. Um, so a good test harness has a common language to express case, test cases, usually in C. A common language to express the expected results. So we like simple results. It's true or false, pass or fail. That's all you need to see. You need access to the features of the production code. And UEFI is actually well suited to this. You need to be able to get into that very private routine and be able to link to it using the test harness and actually run a unit test. You also need a place to collect all the unit test cases. That's just simply managing the directory properly. You need a mechanism to run all the unit test cases. So you just want to be able to hit a simple start test cases for each module you're writing and it be able to come out with a small summary report of the test suite uh, failure or success. And also, if you do find a failure, you want to be able to get the details. So this is, this is uh, the requirements for a unit test. And as I said, don't invent your own. Take a look out there. There's lots of good ones. So the following slides will show an example of unit testing for a bug. So this is a little routine in the code called Mac empty. It has a very simple job to do. And it's looking at this little four byte array to see, is it zero? Not a very hard job to do. The programmer made a mistake. So I don't know if you can read this code from the back there, but basically we're having a problem with integers overflowing. Uh, it's a eight bit integer in this array. Someone's adding up all the elements of array eight bits at a time and storing it in an eight bit result. Um, that doesn't work very well. So, so it overflows, right? You need to have a 32 bit um, place to store the results of the test. And there's many other more clever ways to write this piece of code too. It looks very simple. It's amazing they managed to get a bug in here. It's such a small piece of code. So, the problem occurs when temp value in this example overflows. And if it happens to overflow perfectly so that the result is also zero, in other words, it's an even increment of 100, 200, et cetera, in hex, um, it, it gets the wrong answer. Right? It says the little Mac array is empty when it's actually got data in it. It's a really strange bug. If you can feed it all kinds of data and it gets the right answer. Just one set of data, it gets it wrong. So this is what unit testing is all about. So um, we're going to create a unit test for the MacMT routine. And we're going to feed it some data to show the normal working case here. So don't worry about the macros up here. I've got unit test begin. This is a macro that's supplied by the test harness. No need for you to create that. It takes a, um, a name, it says UT is Mac 0. So that's our little test, unit test name. And here we're going to feed it a series of four zeros. And we're going to execute Mac empty with those four zeros. If it comes back not true, it failed the test. Otherwise it passed, and that's all there is to it. So this is a simple test proves you did not break the working code. That's, all you, that's where you need to start with every single unit test. Make sure the working code isn't broken. And now we add another test for the bug. Is the 8-bit overflow bug fixed? And here we've given it an argument of FF and 01 to make sure it overflows. And if it's working, um, it'll come back and say that that is not an empty field. We know the bug has been fixed, right? Simple test proves the bug is fixed. 
but make sure you do the unit test on the unfixed code first, because you've got to test your test code. So this is just a very simple example of doing one unit test. Amazing how hard this was to find in the real code. Some, sometimes things work, and it's just a special set of data that seems to expose this bug. So now we collect the unit test together. Um, we got a test we, group we call Mac Empty, and it tests for the real case, is the Mac Zero, and then we test, is it the 8-bit overflow bug fixed? And that's the test group we're gonna do. We compile it, we execute it, and we set up the test time to run these tests automatically when this module changes. It's just a press of a button to run the unit test through again to see if someone else has broken the code. Very simple to do. So I have some recommendations on unit testing. So make sure you test the unit code with the inputs designed to expose the bug in the unfixed code first. Make sure you can test your unit test. So when you're designing new product code, make sure it's testable. It has to be designed with a well-defined API and separate the functional code from the UEFI framework. Don't put the two things together. And make sure the unit tests are stored in the same place as the code managed by a test harness. Update the unit tests when code is expected to change and keep them in a common code package, whatever you prefer to name it. The idea is that you make it easy to run this test every single time. No matter small changes, big changes, you can just run the unit tests again. As I said before, don't create a test har harness from nothing. There's several out there that are free and can be easily updated. Uh, I think there was a presentation um, in March from uh, Chris McFarland implementing MicroPython as a UEFI test framework. So there's a free one out there for you. I believe this is on GitHub. Um, there's code already out there available. You can adapt and extend it yourself. So now we've gone through one step of the SDL. We did the uh, unit tests, and now we're gonna move to the response stage where we uh, update the tests and provide a response to the customer. Yes, we confirmed your bug exists. Yes, we've created a fix for it. Here's the code working now with the unit test in place. So here we are, we've done one step around the five steps of SDL. Some resources for you. Um, of course, we mentioned the test tools earlier. Uh, UEFI test tools are up there with the SCTs. You should be able to get that. Um, practical unit testing for embedded systems. This is a free article. It's a great read. Um, there's the uh, PDF for you to download. And test-driven development for embedded C by James Grenning. Uh, that's a, an excellent book. You can look that up, um, download it, take a look. It talks about how to do the test first, then you write the code. And of course, uh, Unity is another uh, open source uh, test framework that's out there for you, available for you to use and adapt for your own uh, purposes. I think that's it. Are there questions? around for the speaker session later on, so you can ask questions then as well. Thank you very much.